I need you guys to put your hands together for Marky Basie. Hi, everyone. Hello. First of all, can I just say thank you for an amazing performance? Thank you, guys. That was a lot of fun. That was the third time I've sang that song, so I'm getting really? better as the day progresses. Yeah. You know, it's funny because as you were singing it, it's like there's rare occasions where I hear somebody sing something live and I actually like it more than when I first heard it, like on the radio or whatever. Oh, really? Thank you. So, plot Appreciate twist. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you for that. So, let's talk about plot twists. Okay. What's it about? <laughs> He's like, okay. What's it about? How did you come up with the concept? Um... It's uh, about when you think a relationship is going to go one way, like maybe one night. Okay. <laughs> or really? uh, be like a short-lived relationship. And then she's like, plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> that stuff could be so many different things. No, I though. mean, uh, no, like, I don't. I don't mean it in that type of way. Uh, right? Baby, on the way. I mean, um, no, you know, like, have you ever been in a situation where you're like, I'm just gonna like have sex with this person a couple times and then never, you know, like probably that'll be the end of that. But then it turns into something like, wow, I actually really like that person, and it becomes real, and then it's your girlfriend. <laughs> That's Plot amazing. Oh my. <laughs> you know, I think that's something that a lot of dudes actually relate to because I think a lot of dudes go into every situation like, uh, yeah, we're just going to have some fun. And then eventually, oh my God, I got a girlfriend. I actually caught feelings. Yeah. Like, I think every dude I've ever had has always said, I don't want a girlfriend. And, and then, then six months later, happened? they're yelling at me because I did something. I'm like, I thought you didn't want a girlfriend. <laughs> What's that about? You know what I mean? That's true. That's actually the script can get flipped easily. Women yeah. have the power. So Women have the power? You have all the power, yeah. I We're just, we just pretend. <laughs> we just pretend. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations, because it's definitely a hot single. And it's Thank the you. lead single off your new album, right? Yeah, lead single. Um, my album is called I'm Here, I'm Good, I'm in Exile. That comes out in September. Um, I'm very, very excited. I feel like all my fans know uh, like the different sort of layers that I have musically and what I'm capable of, but my sort of like mainstream audience has really only heard... Uh, you know, maybe you and me, maybe my stuff with G Easy. Right. So I think a lot of people don't really know um, what I'm really into. Like maybe some of you guys do. Like if you're here, you know. Yeah, we were you know, talking about it that you're very dynamic because you have like a hip hop side and you have yeah, the R and B side. Exactly. The so the side. the album like has all that and G Easy's on the album. Kehlani YG is on the album. Ooh. Um. Yeah. Ooh. YG four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no but for real like so it kind of shows i think it shows more of me and that also that's very um you know i'm a reflection of the bay area that's what I was in a say. lot of ways so yeah. you know people like now i feel like people all over the country are understanding what you know even if you grow up in you know i went to tam high in marin but it's like but i also been everywhere around the bay area and it's like i might be He's a white dude. He's a pop singer. But no, I grew up listening to Mac Dre. Same as everybody right. here, but people don't really understand that outside of the Bay. Yeah. And like our culture that we have is really like the most diverse of anywhere I've been. Right. L.A. is like damn near segregated. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it like, I guess New York City is pretty uh, integrated too culturally, but it's just cool to see uh, how it's all coming to fruition now with all these Bay Area artists and even like what you the SOB stuff you guys are just playing right now, everyone's going crazy. Like that's that's turning into like a nationwide thing. Right. And uh, it's just exciting time. So I'm I glad I get talk to. I about yeah. that. Like I feel like the nation is actually sleep when it comes to Bay music because a lot of styles that you're hearing right now that people people are mimicking come from the Bay. I ain't gonna say no names, but it comes from the Bay. You know what I mean? I don't even think they're asleep that much anymore. Okay. It's really you know you have like the GEs and the Kalani's are killing, killing it. And, you know, we're going to keep um, putting on and, yeah, I don't know. I think they know now. Well, let's talk Getting about closer. being sleep. So I heard that you wrote for a few notable people as well. Yes, I did. So let's talk about Sean Kingston. Okay. Beat, beat it. Beat it. it. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was singing the hook. So when you write <laughs> songs like that and it becomes a smash for people, do you ever feel like, damn, I should have kept that for myself? Well, at the time when I w that I was writing for other people, I wasn't even thinking about myself as an artist. Wow. So I was just really focused on uh, just kind of getting better 
you yeah. know i think um being able to write is what sustains you in this industry like if if you have a, a strong ability to actually create from nothing you always have a place in music and all my musical heroes prince stevie wonder you know smoky robinson like way back and then into the 80s and 90s and music is a craft right you know so um you have to be dedicated to the craft and then the result that you get from putting in that work that's up, not really up to you that's up to god or whatever you believe in so to me that that portion of my life was just about <clears throat> okay like this is my only opportunity in music is to write for whoever comes through knickknacks garage door <laughs> right and uh it was sean kingston and then it was like chris brown one day and now you know you see like what him and, and my homie bobby brackens have been able to do like writing big huge smashes for other people and i was just kind of a part of that and um that's what led to me being like shit i do have a bunch of songs that are mine that are demos my early stuff like my first song with kehlani right she just was like running around la someone was like there's this new girl you should check her out like write something for her yeah and then she was just so cool she was like oh you sound so good on this you should just like we should do it together and you right. should put it on your soundcloud so it's just little things like that and so the that writing portion of my life kind of is what made all this come true so kind of get got you those connections yeah exactly built you up to what you are now mm. and made me way better too because the time that i put i wrote like 200 songs in three years or something like that damn yeah it was a lot what's the process for you to write um i just like Daydream. get really drunk really i'm sorry i want to say see it. you drunk because i feel like the marky that we see right now when he's drunk is probably like next level <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I, I know who some of your friends are, so I'm like, yeah, they definitely yeah. some turn up games. You could ask Shabazz. He, <laughs> he's embarrassed me a couple times in the club. Well, uh, welcome to the family, you yeah. know? No, I I, uh, I kind of I walk around a lot. I like to walk. Really? Lot. Yeah. I, I highly suggest walking to all of you. Explore. Um, right. If you want to write music, I, I walk a lot. I uh, I just, I listen, I don't know. I just walk, listen, and then just wait to get that, like, phrase or a melody that keeps coming back um to me and then just record it but it's always been an easy process for me i never force it you never force it no well that's good because you definitely have some amazing stuff you've written some hits plus of your own hits of course yeah but i did want to ask you how did you end up linking up with french montana because that was so random to me really random right <laughs> <laughs> now we have a similar like our my management and his management are kind of cool uh I guess do we have the same management? It's Maverick, yeah. Like with our management company is the same. Wow. And French French is one of those people that is just like treats everybody with hella respect and is really cool to everybody. Yeah. And also he'll just sit there and be like, Play me your music and I'll be like, Okay, play one song, two songs. It's like, cool, play more. And like I'll play like <laughs> seventy songs. Wow. And he'll just ask me like what what do you like? Like what could I work on? out of these songs and he the session that i did with him he stayed awake for 38 straight hours recording music what it was really really intense i couldn't like i couldn't do it myself i had to leave <laughs> but it was like a it was a really like if you guys his album is coming out i don't know like how many people in the bay really you know know like follow french like that yeah. but he's a real like legend where he's from you know in new york he's like a real pioneer mm -hmm. um in a lot of different ways and in the street and so it's cool to be on that album and he loves the bay too so that's definitely dope i can't wait mm -hmm. to hear the track because i saw that and i was like ooh, french yeah. and marky basic that might be fire it's cool you know what i mean yeah definitely. so let's go back to your own album you said it comes out september when i don't have the exact day yet but i'm gonna say september 5th and your favorite song that <laughs> <laughs> september 5th which was real with so that arbitrary. is that anyone does anyone have a september birthday what is it that's probably more realistic. September twenty first. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're we'll gonna go make her that. birthday dreams come true. Okay. Make sure you tag her when you drop it. All right. So anywho, going back to your album, you wrote your whole did you write your entire album yourself or Um, I mean I write on everything, but I collaborate with people okay. as much as I can. I, I don't um shun collaboration ever. I like to uh, include my friends and you know, people whose talent I respect. I don't have like an ego thing. Like I have to write everything. Right, right, right. It's all good. I know I can write, so 
He's like, I know I got skills. Yeah. So which one would you say is um, exposes who you are or is your favorite track off of the album? Did you have a say? What did they say? Uh, <laughs> I thought you knew. I was like, like which one's most personal uh, to you? The first, the first song on the album is called Black Jeep. That's like a personal story. I, I don't really um, go like too in depth about my like you know growing up formative years or whatever, but they were pretty tumultuous. Yeah. When I was like in middle school and early high school, so I have a couple songs. Maybe the first song is called Black Jeep. I kind of talk about that. What's it about? <laughs> like I don't want to give it away. I mean, no, I just I I had a like a pretty um traumatic like you know death in my family and just shit that you know a lot of people go through, but it's kind of rare for like when I was you know thirteen to deal um, with. Yeah, yeah, just hyphy family craziness, and I don't talk about it that much in music because I feel like I didn't really people didn't really start listening to my music till I was kind of like. A little bit older right like when i was 18 19 writing raps that's all i talked about was right. like my little struggle period of my life and then as i kind of grew up and developed out of that i wanted to make music just that made me feel happy and you know not wasn't necessarily like therapeutic any longer right. but on this album there's maybe like one or two black jeep uh probably most notably that's kind of me dealing with my you know teenage Bullshit that understandable. I had to deal with. Yeah. I think a lot of people can relate to that. And I did want to go back to you rapping. Because I heard that you wrote your first rap when you were seven. Yeah, I've been really I was really into it. <laughs> like <laughs> Do you I, remember uh, it? I wanna hear what a seven year old's <laughs> rap sounds like. That's why I'm like, do you remember that? Was it called Loyalty or something like that? I think lines? no. I, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a song. No, I um Yeah, I do remember. <laughs> Please let me hear it. Please. One at a time, let me rhyme. Breaking them down like I do. Hell, I don't even need a nine. All I need is a party and a an MIC. And I get all the ladies in the party freaky. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what a seven year old has bars. Or <laughs> well, something like that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So now I'm super excited for the new album. But one thing yeah. I did want to say about because I want to see like what kind of bars you going to drop, right? Yeah, there's but a couple on there. Speaking of you, you always drop some funny lines. And if you follow you on social media, mm -hmm. that's when you say some of the most random shit. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So what I thought I would do, because a lot of times people always question, and they're always like, what the hell is he talking about? Like, oh, wow. My favorite game. Cool. Explain your tweets. Oh, shit. So <laughs> did you see his face? Terrified. So read it to the audience and then explain what it meant. Or why you tweeted it? Oh, this is like when I'm acting like a petty teenage girl. <laughs> I feel bad for the artist that could have worked with the squad but chose a different way, and then their first song is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay, well, I'm like part of a collective called Platter Mob. Right. That's me, Fess. Uh, Bobby Brackens and Nick Knack and yeah. um, Bobby Brackens has discovered and cultivated a lot of like really talented girls yeah uh, and guys like shit me I'm like part of that Nick Knack <laughs> Tinashe like he was the first person to put on for Tinashe so wow. lots of times what happens is we'll try to work with an artist and we'll be like we need um like come work with us me and bob will write your songs nick will produce but like we need to like s like you need to like sign with us in right. some type of like official context so that we know that all this energy that we're putting into this artist is worth it right and a couple times we like started off with certain artists who i won't name because you wouldn't know who the fuck they were if i did <laughs> their first single was uh, trash right and we were like come on like rock with us and then they're like no because they get some other like Selena Gomez's manager wants to talk to me and then they put out a song and it's like that song sucked. I would've, we right. would've gave you a way better song and would've popped your career off way more. Um, <laughs> so that's just like me being salty, basically. Salty. It's great. not salty. It's you Kinda. being honest, but you know. I like this game though. <laughs> uh, social media makes me bipolar. <laughs> um, that It's basically like, I, you know, 
I didn't have a cell phone until I was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. So this is not ingrained in me to like live my life and, um, you know, put forth my personality through a cell phone. But then sometimes I'm just like all day, all night, like completely can't get off Instagram. Um, so I just, I go back and forth between feeling like this is the end of the world and it's beautiful. Social media bipolar. is depressing. Like every time I get on there, it's something negative. Yeah, you know so what I mean? I, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I threw up in front of Drake for my birthday. What? Ha ha. Okay. So <laughs> what happened was I'm really into getting on hypes, like dietary hypes. So this one that I went on. I wanted to do a cleanse and it's called the goat's milk fast. So for eight days, the only thing I consumed was goat's milk. Um, oh my God. Basically, it's like to rid yourself of parasites and you know, you lose weight. It turns out that goat's milk has all the necessary nutrients for survival. Really? It's high in fat content. It has a lot of protein. So wait a minute. If there's an apocalypse, go get yourself a goat and you're good. If you have a goat, like you're fully good. Everything is fine. <laughs> So, oh but this God. is what happened. So I'm, so I go through, I go through eight days. I'm looking better than I've ever looked before. Like I lose like all my body fat. My skin is clear. I'm just feeling great. And then it's like my first day back is you guys know the rapper Belly. Yeah. It's my homie. That's my homie Belly. It's his birthday, and Belly is like a big time. Like knows everybody everywhere. Sweetheart. Yeah. So. Me and, and my homies, we go to hit this huge mansion for his birthday. This is my first day back. Uh -huh. So I haven't also, like, I haven't drank any alcohol, obviously, because only goat's milk. So yeah. my body is at its most, like, it's like, I'm like a pure newborn baby plucked from, like, an ice <laughs> river. Like, just really vulnerable. Ice river. <laughs> and so, just, like, clean. and like, yeah. So I get to the party, and immediately it's like, we're with Abel and Selena Gomez. At, you know all kicking it and belly drake is there everyone is there and it's like it's time to drink and everyone knows that i party so i can't like not drink in front of like drake and so, like everyone's oh like here God. have a shot so i'm like of course bro i do this every day not. and every time <laughs> i'm drinking i'm like whoa like it feels different because my yeah. body hasn't so basically we're all at the table it was a crazy amazing party and then like something happened and I just hit that wall. Like, I think I'm about to throw up on Selena Gomez. Like <laughs> she's sitting right here. I'm going to throw up like this is terrible. So I snuck out and I was like, all I have to do, Mark, all you have to do is get out of the gates of where this like parking lot is. Yeah. And then just like go down a side street and just yeah. don't let anyone see you doing <laughs> this bad. And I didn't make it. I got to right where the valet was and just collapsed and started throwing up and i threw up for like two full hours oh no and before anyone found me and then fest wait 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 nobody fest found back you? there <laughs> fest back there everyone thought like oh basically like found a girl and left or something like that and then i was like it was so bad i was holding onto a pole like <laughs> and then my friends found me my shirt was completely ripped like i was in the bushes and like Drake was just on the other <laughs> side, like looking at me, like, and I was just getting up and like, oh. <laughs> so that was that tweet. Oh my God, two things there. Goat's milk is amazing. Don't even know where to buy it though. And don't do it while you're drinking. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, no, you need some time to uh, recover, you know, ease your way back into the party life. I don't like that one, that was really stupid. <laughs> He's like, Stupid. <laughs> Trump is really just an amazing Instagram model. Well, <clears throat> let's think about what he actually does and what an Instagram model does. Say shock value dumb shit that means nothing. Right. Take like the hell of pictures and for social media. Use social media to make people have a reaction to what he's doing yeah. as opposed to like actually cultivating and building things that are valuable to other people i mean this is my opinion but i think it's the right one um so i just kind of i kind of view him like he's just like a good instagram model like he just 
he decided to get as famous as you can get. <laughs> oh, and he, he won yeah. yeah, doing that. But I mean, not to me, but that's what I meant by that. That's who we have. As I, don't, I don't mean to get all political on you guys, but we can talk <laughs> about it after if you want. Uh, Whoa. Jeez. I think <laughs> a lot of you blogs are racist. You like to look at the struggle behind a glass case like these rappers are exhibits. Hmm. Break <laughs> that down. Jeez, Mark. <laughs> uh, like, okay, you know when they do like Viceland Chirac? Yeah. And it's like the nerdiest little guy ever, and he's like, Chief Keith, explain to me what is an extended clip? <laughs> right. And it's just like, fuck. Like, that shit makes me just gross. It's like all these. I like mean, they're exploiting the culture. Yeah, it's just like, fuck. You didn't listen to music growing up you have no love for these people where they're from you would never go there and then it's just like just dab and fucking watch everyone shoot each other and be you know listen to the music and just don't have a shred of compassion or empathy or care to and just really it's like turns it into an exhibit and it, or actually that shit really pisses me off in certain days probably when i tweeted that <laughs> uh but yeah like just a lot of those and, and just blogs in general like <clears throat> i don't know i just think a lot of times they just look for like a very specific thing that fits a prototype mm -hmm. to them which is like he's was like the more of a drug dealer he was and the more like times he got shot the more we're gonna write about him because yeah then like our you know hipster blog fan base has something to talk about over wine and cheese for wine and cheese oh my god you know what i'm saying I, do i sound crazy i don't know but that you know like to me i've been really like dedicated to you know the culture that inspires me my whole life right and i'm of like i could work at a blog or something you right. know like that could have been something i did and so when I see that, it's just kind of pisses me off. And I feel like, um, you know, like there's always a conversation to be had about glorifying like violence, drugs, all this crazy stuff. Right. And like you can say that's like a, there's two sides to that argument. But the way certain blogs cover it is just shameless. Like yeah. we're really just going to use all the hard shit that this kid ever went through in his life and kind of just view it like the same way we do like the nature channel or some shit I right don't know. like the nature channel national no, Geographic. Like this is, and then like chief keith did there was the it was the shy rack one that really started to get to me because it just looked so like I, yeah it looks I crazy i don't know i know what yeah, you're talking about sorry. you're not the only person who felt that way because uh some other or the bay the bay area one too it was just kind of i want well, that one was cool g easy was doing good on that one but whatever i like vice i'm gonna get fired now <laughs> <laughs> we all love Vice. Well, anyway, yeah. Marky, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you. I feel like sure. I learned so much from him today. Did you guys learn stuff? Anything new? Nice. <laughs> yeah. A new album is called What? Comes out when? I'm here. I'm good. I'm in exile. Comes out <laughs> September 21st. Yeah, we're going to go with that. <laughs> you choose the day. Tentative day. Your girl, Shane Diddy. My right. man, Marky Basie. 106 came. Yeah.